first question that's relevant to what you're saying is you've said a couple of times in the past too, whatever we're, whatever we're struggling with that we have created it all. But then there's also a second part that we've came in with a certain theme that we had to explore. Yeah. So if there's something that's happened in our lives that's so hard to like change our perception of mm -hmm. or whatever, I think the one that feels better is that we created it all. But the part, but I guess, so just to clarify, there is that other part where we may not have created it, like the two-year-old that passes or the the breakup, right? We may not have created it. It may have been a theme that we had to explore, like you or yourself in a relationship that dissolved. Mm -hmm. True say? Uh, yes, except for the wording that we did not create that because we still created that. Before we came. Correct, but that's the you that I'm always talking about anyway. The you before you came is the you that's here now with you today. It is your higher consciousness. So the law of attraction in this being that we've created certain experiences in this being through law of attraction, mm -hmm. you're not referring to that. You're referring to, that's the clarification. I mean, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. In a way, you never create anything from this point of view, from this place. Right, so when I say you create your reality, I am talking about your the consciousness that literally creates the substance that we see as the wood and the walls and this and your life and the things and the people that you meet. So just like when you're dreaming at night, your consciousness, not the one that you're aware of being usually, unless you're having a fully lucid dream, at which point that's the analogy for being awake to who you truly are in a way. But in most cases, when you're dreaming at night, you're assuming yourself to be a body inside of a dream. But who's creating the dream? It's your consciousness, right? Who's putting in place all the elements and the, the illusion of time and space? It is your consciousness, not the thought of who you think you are. So similarly here, when I say you create your own reality, what I mean is that A, you as the overall consciousness are generating the illusion of form that we see. And in whatever way it shows up, it's created from that higher consciousness. However, that higher consciousness has a wide range of things it can bring to you. It's not that it's limited to what it's creating right now. So your, you as an assumed person consciousness are still in control of that to a high degree because, like I said, it cannot come to you in certain ways if you believe it doesn't come to you in certain ways. So there's free will at the level of your higher consciousness, which actually physically, even though this is not physical, not really, that which physically creates your reality within this dream experience still has to honor your free will that you have developed over time. Free will always has to honor free will. So there is, in a sense, then, separation that is generated partially naturally and partially unnaturally and unnecessary. But there is a partially necessary or relevant separation between what then generates a personal self as opposed to the higher self fully being in full knowingness of itself and not creating another extension of itself. There is some relevance to that extension, to that separation, but it can be thinned out, it can be made more and more transparent. That's what we do through self-realization and self-actualization. We become more transparent to the point where this starts to feel like a bit of a shell, an empty shell. You no longer identify with it. You see that you are that consciousness that is generating these shells and these experiences and the emptiness in form. So then you start generating less and less of the illusion of lower self and higher self because the vibration that you're choosing through the way that you're understanding who you are, you follow so far? Yeah. That the vibration of that equality, the vibratory quality of that energy that you're exuding here on this level of free will is becoming more and more in alignment with the actual frequency of the non-physical self that you are that generates this illusion of physicality. So the less there is a difference, the more alignment there is, the better you'll feel, but also the less of a separation you'll create between you and you. And so then you can start to understand that that you is the same that you were before this physical life, before this physical illusion, before this physical dream, before this physical extension. But that never goes anywhere. It's not like you become from that suddenly this. It's simultaneous. So that higher level is still walking with you all the way. That's still truly who you are, ultimately, more so than this. 
So when you are creating your reality, it's because you as a personal consciousness, through alignment, are allowing the things you truly desire to come through you. In that sense, you're responsible for what happens to you in this life. It is through your attitude, it is through your beliefs, that you will either allow for that true self to come forth in form in the most effortless way, or not. In a sense, those that are out of alignment are more creating their own reality from a personal level than those that are in alignment. Those that are in alignment have reached a transparency to where their higher consciousness is effortlessly moving through. Whereas those that are very much out of alignment and in separation and in arrogance and in insistence, they are actually more taking on the burdens of being the creator of their reality. Not that they're very good at it, because the brain doesn't have a lot of capacity to create physical reality and change space-time around. It cannot really do that. So someone that's really stubborn and insistent upon its misaligning ways of thinking and believing, they are actually more responsible for the way they create their reality, whereas the person that's in alignment is simply allowing it all to come through them. And therefore the goodness of it, the amazingness of it, the connection of it, the realization of it, will have a way greater effect and efficiency because now you're allowing that consciousness to change around space-time realities for you on your behalf, so to speak. Yeah. <clears throat> so the things seen. that happen early on, on in, in your life, for example, here, are that you setting up a certain template for experience that it knows is highly conducive or probable or likely for the personally assumed separate self to then bounce into things, bump into things, and be guided in a certain way so that by a certain age when it realizes it's not just the separate self, it's actually a co-creator of its experience, it has not gone off course too much. That is the template for the youthful life. The youthful life is set up in such a way because it knows that by the very rules of this society, the agreements that this collective has made, which is that a young person simply does not have full knowledge, does not have full responsibility and ability to be who they are, and so higher self knows that that is part of the agreement. There's other civilizations where that's not the case, or not as much the case, but in our civilization it is the case. And so it needs to, in a sense, hold a certain vibratory pattern on its behalf. So it generates a certain playing field, in a sense, set in stone, although it also changes, where certain things are highly probable to be brought into the early ages of that life so that from the unconscious place of being a kid not knowing how to navigate and use your consciousness, you are most likely to not go off course too much, so that when you actually empower yourself, ideally around the age of six, seven, but in our age it's usually like when you die, right before you die. <laughs> <laughs> but ideally, at the, around the age of six or seven years old, you start to really recapture that free will, that co-creatorship, and you start to realize, hey, I came here with a purpose, I came here with a reason, there's more to this than meets the eye. And from that place onward, the more you realize that you're actually having free will and that you can decide how you feel and how transparent you are and how aligned you are, that's when you regain the responsibility. That's when you actually recapture the free will that's kept in storage for you non-physically up until that time. Now, for most people, this keeping in storage of your free will continues for all of their life to a large extent. So it's not until we wake up and empower ourselves and take control of our destiny, so to speak, take responsibility for who we are, why we're here, what we desire, that we're in alignment, that we're getting impulses and intuitions, and that we start paying attention. It's not until that moment that we really start to download more and more of our free will, and then we really do start to become creators of our own reality, because we are regaining that free will, because we're regaining alignment, because we're getting closer back to where we started in this life. We're transcending the rules of the physical civilization that we agree to be a part of to such an extent that we're still a part of it, but we're also very transparent to ourselves beyond this life.